you for those things that don't that, that aren't don't look good, but good for us. We tell you thank you for any and everything Hallelujah. you've done in our lives, Lord. We just tell you thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Lord. We just bless God that he is just God all by himself. And we just give him glory. We give him honor. We give him praise. And we just tell the Lord, thank you. That thank you. 702. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On a Hallelujah. Wednesday evening, I'm yet in my right Hallelujah. mind. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. you, Lord. Mm, All right, glory. We're gonna go, go ahead and get started. I think we don't already got this party started right. You know what I mean? No, <laughs> no, we gotta do is get this party started quickly. Amen. 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 <laughs> go ahead mm. and get us started, uh, Bishop, so we can be off and running. Amen. Amen. Good evening to everyone. This is Burning Bush Worship Center. This is our Bible study evening being taught by our very own pastor, Robert Green, and his assisted with his lovely wife, Vicki. And Lord, we want to tell you that we're grateful. We're yes. thankful. Lord, yes. that you were God, that you sent your only begotten son into the world, that we might have a right to the tree of life. We thank you, Lord. We're grateful for the promises yes. that you've given to us in your word, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for looking beyond our faults and seeing all our needs, Lord. We thank you for the provisions that you make for us, Lord. Yes. And we ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you will continue to use us for your glory. Have your way in our lives, Lord. We ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you will be with Pastor Green as he teaches and be with those of us that will participate in the study of your word. Continue to lead, guide, and direct us, and keep us in the palms of your hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just give him the Bless highest you, Lord. praise. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank Hallelujah. You, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Jesus. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Dr. Sparrow, go ahead and get us started. Amen. We'll be off and running. Glory to God. Ooh. Hello. Uh, hey, everybody. How y'all doing? Good. Hello. Good. good, good. It's good to be on the line another Wednesday. Um. As we do every Wednesday, uh, we're going to do a reflection on the sermon from uh, from Sunday morning, and it, the name, the title was "The Land of Milk and Honey," and we read from Exodus three, verses seven, and partially verses eight. Um, I have it pulled up, and I have it in the King James Version. I'll read it. And it starts at verse seven. It says, and the Lord, the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in mm -hmm. Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their task. <laughs> For I know their sorrows and I am come down to deliver them out of the land of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of a land, out of that land unto a good land and large unto a land flowing with milk and honey. And I'm not mistaken, Pastor Deborah Hawkins stop right there. Amen. 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 And as we do every week, uh, we would like to know what did you get from the sermon on Sunday morning? I got a lot. <laughs> <laughs> a whole lot even going back and uh editing the service to post on youtube got a lot more so there was leftovers that i missed uh on sunday but uh was it ever an exodus that has been happening in my life for the last jesus oh my god but i can tell you what has happened since about friday 
leading up to Sunday. And it was amazing because I just want to give this short story. Uh, Sunday morning, I set my alarm Saturday night to wake up on Sunday morning. And long story short, I didn't hear the alarm or the alarm went off and I must have been so tired that I turned it off. Well, um, my ride was calling to let me know that they were outside when I heard the alarm the next time. So that's my warning that I have five to 15 minutes to make my way out of the door. Um, so it was a push. Uh, I sat on the side of my bed um, dressed, but not fully dressed where everything was uh, ready to go. So I sat on the side of my bed saying, okay, I could, I could possibly sit this one out and not go because I knew I was going to, it was going to be a super push and I was going to have a little struggle to go along with it. Um, so for mid second, I thought I could just, I'll just stay home. But something said, call out to your ride and see if they will give you at least five minutes to get yourself together. Well, I called and the lady said, sure, take your time. I'm no, I'm not rushing. So they gave me my five minutes to go. Um, I didn't think about this until everything was over with, to the service was over with, till I was home Sunday evening. If I wouldn't have made it to church on Sunday, you guys don't know, that was a major, major breakthrough. Um, in, and in, in just my life. And if I just would have, if I would have set out and wouldn't have went, didn't, wouldn't have came to service on Sunday, Pastor Green, I would have missed it. I would have missed, I would have missed that exodus. I would have mixed that breakthrough. And I was just, I was so astounded that I had the option to sit it out and don't go, um, and get my breakthrough. And my God, did I receive a breakthrough uh, during all of that and since Sunday. So I just thank the Lord for that. Uh, just pressing my way on Sunday. You guys didn't know any of the backstory, but to, to, to make the decision to, to press and to get in there and just, just have the Lord do what he did and what he continues to do since Sunday morning. It's just been a miracle. It's been incredible. So I thank the Lord just to be there. And I thank the Lord for being in the presence. I thank the Lord for the pastor for administering the word and just the obedience that it takes to, to be in the midst of it. Amen. 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 Now I Amen. said what I got from it. Did anybody else receive anything from it? I did. I received the words, stop saying what you can and cannot do. Mm -hmm. You don't know what God has put in you to do. Amen. So when it comes up and the spirit says, yes, that's what you say. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I got just in simple words. Mm -hmm. Go with the flow. Amen. <laughs> mm. Mm. Amen. Go with the flow. Mm -hmm. See, and, and, and I was I was listening to, to AP and, and what God was saying is flowing. Mm -hmm. But are you going? Amen. Mm. Everybody on this line, you wouldn't be on this line if you didn't have some flow. I'm Amen. just here to tell you something. If you ain't have some flow. You would be on this line. You'd Amen. be on a respirator somewhere. You'd be on 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 a, on those one of those things that sustains your life. So something's got to be flowing, Amen. Right now in your life, and it's called milk and honey. Amen. Amen. See, see, see we got our own standards for milk and honey. You know what I mean? He mm. said the land flowing with milk and honey. Not just a land with milk and honey, okay? Mm. There's, there, there, there's a flow, but you got to go with the flow. You know what I mean? And Man. what you did Sunday morning, Pastor Stanley, you got up and you decided to go with the flow. Amen. 
Amen. It didn't look like it was flowing like it was supposed to. It didn't look like it was happening like it was supposed to. It looked like every you had every reason in the world to say, I'm going to sit this one out. But mm -hmm. something told you to go. Yeah. Hallelujah. Absolutely. With the flow. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I'll, say, and I'll say this as I end. You shared something with me. I hope you don't mind me sharing it because I don't think it was super secret. No, but sir. when I recited the nursery rhyme, mm -hmm. Humpty Dumpty, <laughs> Pastor Stanley said, Pastor Green, you didn't know it, but my mother called me Humpty Dumpty when I was a little boy. Man. God. <laughs> who who could have known that but God? Yes, sir. Yes, so, sir. So I thank God for for those of you that, that, that may have missed it. Uh, if you don't know the Humpty Dumpty rhyme, <laughs> you know, there's an area of brokenness that all the king's horses and all the king's men or any man you can think of can't put Humpty Dumpty back together again, but God can. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen, Doc. Man. And you know, even with that, like I called you, I think it was like later in the evening, <laughs> like long after service is over with. And that, you know, the word was still echoing because I didn't even think about that when I was at service. When I got home and got settled, that's when it rang a bell, you know? Amen. Amen. Did anyone else receive anything? I see we have quite a few people online. Then I'll speak at once. I'm trying to calm down from this thing making me do a download. And I'm trying to get it back. <laughs> <laughs> Your update is available. I wasn't ready for no update. <laughs> Oh, go with the go with the flow. <laughs> I, I, I want to say I want to say one more thing. I see AP is on, and and maybe she want to respond. Maybe maybe not. She stopped at the the A. But oh. when I got the B, when I read the B, I, I started shouting all over again because <laughs> it's like this land this land flowing with milk and honey. It was somebody else's. Oh, you missed that part. Ooh, wow. ooh, 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 ooh. He gave he gave you houses that mm. you didn't build. Oh, wow. glory to God. He wow. gave you vineyards that you didn't plant. <laughs> AP, the B, the, the B, the, the B AP just blew my mind because he said the, the, if, if you look at it, the scripture, if you're looking mm -hmm. at it, part B says, dash, the mm. home of the Canaanites. The Hittites, mm. the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Havites, and the Jebusites, all them ice, mm. God gave you their land. Hallelujah. He flowed you, he, that, that flow went right into something somebody else possessed. Wow. And they looked at them and they weren't willing to, willing to walk away from it. They weren't willing to give it up without a fight. But God said, it's mine. Oh, glory to God. I got a <laughs> shout all over. Mm. It will not take much mm. for me to get the running. But Good I got to run because somebody said, it's mine. Amen. Woo. Amen. Woo. Woo. Mm, mm, mm. He gave me somebody else's house. Ooh, glory. Good Lord. Mm -hmm. I, I just like the hook, you know, when uh, she talked about milk and honey and she explained it. It just made so much, it brought a lot of clarity mm -hmm. to why he said the land for milk and honey. I like the hook. This is your excellence. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's all I need to hear. <laughs> I mean, the whole, I mean, you would have never thought that how that was going to end up like that. This Absolutely. is an exodus. And I'm telling you, I don't know. Well, there's something about that message. I've had joy ever since. Yeah. I mean, I think leading up to that message, there were mm -hmm. other messages that brought me to this point. Even, mm -hmm. you know, even... Uh, uh, Prayer. I see, like it's all just connected, it's flowing. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's like living that that word that were preached, milk and honey. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And then I got this boomerang, this update. So y'all pray for me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> The boomerang. <laughs> but we're <been> tested constantly. <laughs> Amen. But, but it was personal for me because I, I when I when I got my first church, I was appointed to a church, and I already knew that the church only had one member, mm. and I knew that the church was in the the, the neighborhood of, in this area called Orange Park, and the Navy base. And when the, the uh, district elders took us over to the church, when he opened the doors, unlocked the doors, and he opened the double doors of the church, I just stood there, me and Vicky. It was fully furnished. Wow. When I say furnished, I mean pulpit furniture, you know, uh, lectern, uh, had drum set, had an organ sitting over there. It, it looked like church ended one day and they walked away and then god walked me into it wow and i was like wow so some one day somebody asked me why the previous pastor left the church and i had an answer for them he left the church because it was mine oh come right. on somebody Amen. Come All on. Right. Come <laughs> on, somebody. it was mine mm -hmm. you know what i mean god awesome. had had me God to have people take care of things and, and, and it's yours. It Amen. already belongs to you. You just got to go with the flow. And Amen. I went with the flow with one member. Mm. A lot of pastors would turn around and say, I ain't passing no church with no one member. Mm -hmm. No, I went with the, with the flow with one member. Then I waited a month before I had the first service. And the district elder said, a Pastor Green, Elder Green, why you hadn't had your first service yet? I said, I'm still praying. Mm. Even though I went with the flow, I wasn't going to go to God. I said, go, oh, glory to mm. God. Hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah. Mm. I wasn't going to go to God. I said, go. Wow. Yeah. So so it, 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 it's personal to me. You know what I mean? Because he came down. All that me and Vicky went through and other ministers, and we've kind of highlighted that. He came down and he he heard our cry. Mm -hmm. He heard Vicky crying on the way to church. Mm -hmm. We were in a situation where we were serving God, and Vicky would literally cry wow. as I'm driving down the road. We're going to church mm. because of the things that we could we'll endure once we got there. And people think they got reason. Oh, Jesus, holy, holy, holy. Oh, oh, oh. But anyway, I'm just saying, she cried and she said, I'm ready to leave. Mm -hmm. And I would look at her and say, God ain't told us to leave yet. Amen. Amen. Now you look at your wife crying and look at how she's feeling mm -hmm. and still stand on what the God says. Mm -hmm. so that, 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 was, that, was, that was a stand your ground case right there because, you know, y'all know Vicky will tell you how T.I.C. is. <laughs> And she would tell me how to, but we still went. Amen. Went until God Amen. said go. And when he said go, we what? went with the flow. And Amen. flowed right into our first church subsequently because we went when God said go. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, what, uh, what Deborah preached Sunday, it caused me to do a lot of reflection. Looking back over my life and looking back over the word of God and all that the children of Israel went through when they were in Egypt and how God brought them out, how he parted the Red Sea and how they danced once they got through the Red Sea and then to promise them a land flowing with milk and honey and to keep his word and gave them the land with milk and honey. Hmm. A lot of times we, it, it, for some reason, songs are coming to me. Sometimes we have to examine ourselves, and sometimes we have to do some reflecting on just how good God is in our lives, regardless of the situation, regardless, regardless of the circumstance. We know God's got us. Amen. 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 Amen.
and you know it, uh, it's continuous according to the word that was spoken mm -hmm. it's not going to run out but, I mean, it's, it's not. amen <laughs> amen <laughs> Oof. You know, I have to say that that message was very personal for me. Yes, ma'am. And the whole time that the Lord was giving it to me, he was also showing me um, my life, mm -hmm. where I had come from. When I left my first marriage, <clears throat> I remember telling the Lord, if I'm going to be happy the rest of my life, you have got to let me out of here. Mm. And I know it wasn't two weeks later, he showed me where to go. And that was one of those uh, efficiency hotels to stay in. I stayed in that hotel for four months, didn't take nothing from that house, wow. but my clothes, because my ex-husband thought that if I started, we had talked about me taking things, but then when I got ready to leave, he said, you can't take anything. And he thought that would hold me there, which mm -hmm. for a moment it did. But then I said, no, when God opens the door to let me out, I'm going Amen. and I'm not looking back. <clears throat> and I stayed in that hotel for four months mm. until he showed me where to go for my permanent stay. And I went to, um, he told me to go to Stony Point. And I went to Stony Point. I was two houses away from the house that was meant for me. And wow. I kept calling the people, the, the little sign outside with the number. I kept calling and calling and nobody would call me back. And I said, Lord, these people are not calling me back. I was sitting at work one day talking about it. And this guy walked in and said, you looking for a place to stay? And I said, yeah, I went out there, but the people don't call. They won't call me back. And he said, well, my cousin's got a house two doors down from there. You want me to talk to him? And I said, yeah, talk to him. The man came in, told me all I needed was first month and deposit to get in. Then he said, I want you to come and see the house so you can see the inside, the layout. When I got to the house, he said, pick out your carpet and the color paints that you want. And mm. God had given me my colors of uh, what to use and, and what to do. And everything just ran smoothly. And I knew that it was nobody but God. And that's when he said to me, that was your exodus. Mm. And it was, just, it was just so much. You know, and 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 it was overflowing when he when I said, "Well, I don't have no furniture or nothing," and he said, "You're gonna have more than you can use." Wow! And, hey, he, filled that, and he was right. He filled that place up. When we moved out of that place, Hawk and I had to give half of the stuff away because we couldn't use it. We couldn't use it. So you know, I just thank God for that message because I felt like it was more for me. Than anybody else, I, I just I took it just that personally that it was really for me to see my exodus and to see that I am living right. in okay, the um, land of milk and honey. I it's me flowing, and he said you would never be lacking, and I'm not lacking. No, so I sure. thank God for that. You know, that's no. not bragging; that's just praising God for yeah. what He's doing. Yeah. I'm not sure it's if not. He's or not too. I know what you. I know what you're saying, Deborah, and that's what I'm talking about, reflecting, because mm -hmm. I've had this similar experience that, that you've had. I've been in this building now for 15 years, never missed a beat, and it's only because God blesses me, keeps me. Right. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. You know, you know what was uh what was Yeah, he was here, but he what was he went, I won't say crazy. Let Elder Ray know he's on, he's not on mute. He needs to go to mute. Elder Ray. Sorry. That's okay. You know, something that happened when I went back and watched the message, 
I didn't, I didn't even fully grasp everything that was happening Sunday. And when I went back and watched it later on Sunday, um, that's when a lot more started to stand up in the message. I was like, wait a minute. Oh, this is for all of us. This is for me. This is for the, the person a minister and Pastor Deborah. This is for all of us. This was personal for everyone who was in the midst of it. And hopefully everybody received it because it was definitely for everybody. It was. It was definitely for everybody. Amen. It was a right on, what they say, a right on time word, an on time word. It was definitely <laughs> an on time word for everyone. It was Rhema specific. Yes, absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. And what is so good about it when it's when it's being refreshed on Wednesday night, mm -hmm. we get all of the meat that was said on Sunday. Yes, awesome. ma'am. Amen. Amen. That was perfect. And uh, Pastor Deborah, we just thank you for being obedient to the Lord and how he led you to uh, to minister the word to the uh, congregation. And, and you know, it, it, it really resonates because all of us have been in a place where we were felt misery. Mm -hmm. We didn't feel good about it. We didn't feel good about what was happening mm -hmm. to us. We didn't get, feel good about what we were going through. Mm -hmm. But I got consolation knowing the Lord said, mm -hmm. it says that mm -hmm. the Lord said, I have indeed, come on now, he said, I have indeed <laughs> seen the misery of my people. Come on now. For, for everybody who think they've been left behind, for everybody who think they're going through by themselves or on their own, God is telling us, I see you. I see your misery. Amen. And, and I'm 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 gonna take you back on that part because that's that's what <laughs> blessed me. Cause I'm gonna tell you something. I've been running for a long time, and I ain't tired yet. Cause I go all, <laughs> hey, all the way back to my childhood with some Exodus stuff from mm. my childhood mm. with my like, strange daddy to college to my first marriage that was abusive. I mean, you name it, till when we got, got with Green, what we went through, God brought us out them streets to the first semester. I've just been- Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah, yes. When I tell folk what the Lord has done for me, and mine, it ain't no joke. And I'm like, I ain't bragging or nothing. But I don't want mm -hmm. for nothing. I'm not liking. I am more at peace than I've been in a long time because this last exodus was us moving from over to here. And it's almost, and I already know God already had this in the making for us because of the way that happened. Because we got this house like within two, three days, you know, uh -huh. with no check no nothing so you know it was like just laid at us so god has really been good to us and when he says that i have surely seen the afflictions because baby i done put down some tears you hear me and some Amen. tears adjectives as deborah called it baby i done did it all Amen. and here i can stand today and say that god is the light of the world. That's my savior. And I love him so much. And I thank God that he placed me in the ministry that he have with Burning and Bush. Cause I love you guys. I mean, y'all just like my family. And it's like Jeanette said, and when we come together, I mean, I'm free. I feel so free. I just, we just talking just like we talking amongst family and friends forever. So God, that's a big change for myself because I never was that person because I always was reserved mm -hmm. as to what I do around church folk, you know, even though till they push me to the limit, then I don't care what I say. But <laughs> as a whole, you know, I was very reserved what I see around church folk because they like to twist stuff and cause a bunch of confusion. But with the Burning Bush family, y'all my peeps, I love y'all. And this is my exodus, even this time coming around, coming to Burning Bush Worship Center. Amen. 
Amen. Awesome. Awesome. And Vicky, I think that's why I got so much joy because mm-hmm. I realized so when you look back and see where he brought you from, oh my yep. God. Yeah. He brought yes. us, like the old folks say, from a mighty long oh, way. A mighty long way, girl. Yes. And Hallelujah. And, and, and minister to you to, to as a reminder, like Joanne said, yeah. reflecting. You see, all of us were able, like Stanley said, to receive that word because it was for all of us. Mm-hmm. It was personal for devil, but believe me, it was personal for all. Amen. It was the exodus. Lord have mercy. I thank Amen. God. You look back and you see the, the misery that we've been through. And, mm-hmm. and you thought God had left you. You didn't think he was nowhere around. But Lord have mercy. He was there. Yeah. All the time. Remember that song we used to sing? Yes. He was Great there all the time. Hallelujah. Yeah. Ooh, all this making that thing happen. Mm-hmm. Thank Amen. you. Hallelujah. See what the Lord has done. I'm ready to yeah. shout. <laughs> 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 He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Praise dance in time. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> We're on the top of the top of the bottom of the hour, headed up to the top. We're at seven thirty-three. <laughs> Any final comments before we segue into our, our lesson concerning the Lord's supper? Amen. Amen. Can we get a reader for First Corinthians eleven seventeen to twenty-six? And let's. Go to Bible study. I got the NIV. Read on. Okay. In the following directives, I have no praise for you, for your meetings do more harm than good. In the first place, I hear that when you come together as a church, there are divisions among you. And some, and to some extent, I believe it. No doubt there have, no doubt there have to be differences among you to show which of you have God's approval. So then, when you come together, it is not the Lord's Supper to you eat. For when you are eating, some of what you go, uh, some of you go ahead with your own private suppers. As a result, one person remains hungry and another gets drunk. Don't you have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God by humiliating those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? Certainly not in this manner. Nor... mm, For I receive from the Lord that I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, 
whoever eats bread or drinks the cup, the Lord eat, the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why among you are weak and sick and a number of you have fallen asleep. Verse 31. But if we were more discerning with regard of ourselves, we would not come under judgment. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I hope Amen. you all were listening to the scripture is so rich in the text. Um, uh, we're going to unpeel and unpack. I call this a series because there's no way I'm going to try to jam it in all tonight because you would, would are going to be able to participate and share what God is sharing with you. And we can also answer questions because there's much talked about when we talk about the communion service. This is what God has said about communion. And there's more. We want to walk through it. See, this was instruction from Paul concerning the observance of the Lord's Supper. And we want to spend some time unpacking this. And the Lord's Supper well, that we know of it, what God intended versus the traditions that we have set in place. If you notice what, what you heard, there was nothing about red gloves. There was nothing about white clothing. There was nothing about covering chairs and podiums and rails. There was nothing about a lot of the things that we see observed during the Lord's Supper that the Lord had not said. Even the things he did say, Let's, we're going to wonder and answer the question, why did God say it? And it's really all in the scripture, but we're going to unpack it. And as we read the scriptures, we're going to see that Paul is correcting an abuse of the Lord's soul. Okay? And when you read the scriptures, starting at 17, Paul is correcting an abuse of the Lord's Supper. Remember that in context, okay? But what Paul yeah. was saying. And it's gonna help us put the scriptures in context from a practical and a spiritual aspect. You'll see it, practical and spiritual. If we start looking at uh, practical and spiritual, start looking at verses 17 through 19, he begins to talk about a problem he begins to talk about a problem. And we see that Paul gave specific instructions that he wrote in the epistle to Corinth. And there are many churches like the church of Corinth. Again, mm -hmm. I'll say in pretext, thank God for burning bush. But mm -hmm. there are many churches that are, that are the Corinth of the church world. So we see there were some issues and traditions and behaviors that Paul is addressing through the revelations of God. And see, when we think about what Paul has said at the end of the scriptures we read, you understand he was addressing a problem that had existed in the Corinth church and other bodies likewise. Okay. And we'll see that these issues and traditions that he addressed, he's addressing it through the revelations from God. So first question is, how do we know that Paul had to have received revelations about the Lord's Supper? How, how would we, how would we to kind of practically determine that he would have had to receive revelations about the Lord's Supper? Anybody? Well, I, I would say he, he tells them in verse 23, 
Say that again. I say he, he in verse twenty three he says it plainly. I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. Right, right. So, but but practically speaking, why would why would we can can say for sure for sure that's true? I'll, I'll put it this way: Was Paul at the last supper? Mm -mm. No, no, <laughs> no, he was. <laughs> No, he was. I hear you. So not being at the Last Supper, he got a whole lot of information. Yeah, he was telling the truth. Exactly. And the truth came from revelation. Amen. 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 Not radio, not TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, some some have surmised, well, somebody told him about it. They, they were telling the story about the Last Supper. He just repeated it. But he said, who gave it to him? The Lord gave it to him, right? Mm -hmm. So he gave it to him because he was not only setting it in, in play, like uh, Elder Mo said, the truth, but he was also correcting behaviors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. All right. So where in the Bible are the Lord's Supper references seen? What, what books of the Bible has the communion scriptures in it? I don't Anybody? know. One First Corinthians and, uh, um, 11. Yeah. What, what it's in most of the Gospels. In the Gospels. Mm -hmm. I, I heard most, and then I heard the Gospels. Yeah, in the Gospels. Okay. I, I think Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all have a version. Okay. And and uh, I, I think know for most... sure Matthew. Yeah. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and First Corinthians have yes. the. There's four gospels and one epistle has the scriptures regarding communion, right? Yeah. Uh, somebody read for me Matthew 26, 26 through 29. Matthew 26, 26 through 29. Twenty six through twenty nine. Yes. All right. I have the King James version. Okay. Uh, starting at twenty six, it says, "And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it, and gave it to his gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body." Twenty seven. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, "Drink ye, all of it." For well, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of the sin of sins. 29 says, but I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. Yeah. So does any of the gospels detail the references from 1 Corinthians 11, 27 to 31, when it talks about unworthily and, and uh, not discerning the Lord's death. Uh, are they, is any of that language or context found in any of the other writings? It's definitely, I don't see it in Matthew. No. I don't think so. It's only no. in... Uh, First Corinthians, where he talks about being sick and. Okay. So, and, and why do you think that was? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Is it because the way Paul received it? So, so you asked. to Paul. It was what now? I said it was the way it was revealed to Paul by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, so what do you think was going on during the time? That, that he received the communion with the scriptures that pretty much talked about receiving unworthy, examine yourself, uh, 
not discerning the Lord's death. And that started 27. Right, 27 to 31. Mm -hmm. So was there some corruption going on? And that's why yeah, he received okay. division in the church. Perhaps. All of, all of those scriptures that we read uh -huh. <laughs> from 17 down to 26. Mm -hmm. From 17 to, uh, I want to say. 31. No, 26 to, 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 to when he began to describe it. Mm -hmm. He actually was talking about behaviors and the problem and that was happening in the church. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so this was an epistle to Corinth, the believers in Corinth, because the believers in Corinth had some issues mm -hmm. that God not only gave them the right instructions for communion, he also let them know the admonition was doing it improperly. And we're gonna peel this back a little bit so you'll see what was happening during the time, okay? Is, is that making sense? Yes. Yes, yes. 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 Okay. amen. So Paul began to give an instructions about concerning the observance of the Lord's Supper by first introducing the problem that has occurred, okay? And he writes to the Corinthian Christians that the way uh, in this way, because many, even the congregations today, that when we come together, mm -hmm. it's not for better, it's for what? Worse. Remember he said Worse. that? Mm -hmm. in, yeah. in the scripture. And, it's, and it, it was to their credit that they gathered together, mm -hmm. even though something neglected by too many Christians today, it was in disobedience. You know what I mean? Even in disobedience to like Hebrews 10 and 25. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So the credit is they've gathered together. Mm -hmm. Like I said, even today, some people omit the commandment that God gave us in Hebrews 10, 25, that says that yeah. we must gather together. Mm -hmm. He didn't give us an option. He said we should gather together. Mm -hmm. He gave us a command mm -hmm. together. But, but it was not for the better, but for the worse. So even though they came together, there were some things that came out or came up because they were together following the commandment. You'll see it in just a minute. So a large part of the problem with the gatherings of the Corinthian believers was that there were divisions among them. Something Paul had heard, but he believed it, knowing the history and the character of the Corinthian believers. Okay. Mm. So he spoke of the problem all the way back in um, 1 Corinthians 1, 10 to 17. But when you read about Corinthians uh, 1, verses 10 through 17, if you remember, he was talking about this conflict where sometimes we as church people say, I want to hear Pastor Green preach. And then somebody say, well, I like Deborah when she preach. Then somebody say, well, why don't they ever let somebody else preach? Then mm -hmm. somebody will say, we need a visiting preacher. Then somebody will say, you remember when so-and-so used to preach years ago? They were, it caused division because, it, it, because they were talking about Paul. They were talking about Apollos. They were even talking about Cephas, who was who? Peter. Mm -hmm. So it caused division. There were quarrels just by who was bringing the word of God. That still happens today. People get right. divisive over who's going to preach mm -hmm. or who's preaching. You know what I mean? Uh, even uh, I heard uh, T.D. Jake said one time that, that, that he can't hardly tell people he's going out of town. Because <laughs> then his attendance will go down to a third, uh, uh, two thirds of the people won't come to church because mm -hmm. uh, Jake ain't here today. People mm -hmm. literally, and he said it, people will literally drive in the parking lot, find out who's preaching, turn around and drive out the parking lot and go home. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Real, real talk. Because of who's preaching. So this was this was going on in Korea because they were talking about Paul, Apollos, even Cephas. And and it caused quarrels when, when they should be talking about what? Christ. Trusting that whomever is speaking 
Christ is speaking through them. Yeah. So, so when we, we 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 think about that, you you'll find that um, Paul said, "But there must be these factions." So we usually think of factions or cliques or divisions among. Uh, believers as nothing but a problem, right? But Paul reveals something. He said there's a purpose that God has in allowing these factions or divisions, right? Mm -hmm. Does anybody re remember what he said the purpose was? It's in the scripture. Somebody read 1119 for me. First Corinthians 1119. Okay, we're going back to first Corinthians. Said 1119. Uh -huh. All right. Yes, sir. 1119 in the King James Version. 19 says, for there must be also heresies among you. That Say that they, again. Say that again. Well, there must be heresies. There must be heresies. That's divisions or differences. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Among you. That uh -huh. that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. There it is. I'm not making this stuff up. Okay. God through Paul through the Spirit of God said, no doubt there have to be some differences mm -hmm. among you. See, sometimes we look when we see differences in the church, mm -hmm. we get us, oh, I can't believe. And this supposed to be the church, and people supposed to be this, and mm -hmm. they supposed to be saved. But look, the Bible said there must be mm -hmm. differences. The cliques must be in the church. The divisions must be in the church. And he said, this is to show which of you have God's approval. This is God's way of putting wrong on Front Street. Oh, glory, glory. <laughs> so, so, so when he says, uh, when he says that, like un unpack that last part. Where he says that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. Is that to say those who are approved to preach the word of God? No, like, like not, just unpacking and tell us not, not necessarily to preach the word of God, but uh -huh. those who are God's people. See, uh -huh. it said that those who are approved may be recognized among you. God shows God allows factions so that mm -hmm. over time, those who really belong to God. Mm -hmm. will be made evident. See, anybody can put on a suit and a church hat. Anybody can put the tie on and the, and, and the high heel shoes to let over. Anybody mm -hmm. can wear a long skirt and then put the head covered on their head right. and walk in all solemn, the lips moving like they're talking to God and mm -hmm. nod their head like they're listening to God. <laughs> the devil is a liar. And he goes, sit your behind <laughs> I'm just saying. God said, I'm going to show you up. I'm going to reveal to you, I'm going to reveal oh. to the rest of the world mm. who you really are. I'm going to show you the devil going to show up. So, yeah, they show up when they act the fool in church. There was a fool before they acted the fool. Mm. It was God's that's opportunity to show up. Say that again. I said, that's why they became sick and some of them would die. Well, right? we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that part. That, that's that, that's a whole oh. other part. We're going, to, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. But we're just talking now about how these people that he was talking about have to be there mm -hmm. because God has to show who his people are versus those other people. I'm going to put it this way, and then I'm going to move on. You ever seen somebody with a big church hat or the nice suit on? that may have an office or may be thought highly anointed and all this, show they behind you and go like, oh, yep. what in the world was that? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just saying. Yes, I'm saying that because God yes. has a way of showing us who his people are. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm, yeah, definitely. That's what it's saying. So, Green, is that why is that why is that why, why the word says let the tweet and the tear grow together and God will do the separating? You're already in the scripture. Yes, yeah. ma'am. That's what I was yeah. saying as well. Because right. yeah. guess who the sower was? You got to understand this thing. Mm -hmm. Guess who got the, who allowed the people in the church mm -hmm. when the sower went out to sow? Mm -hmm. 
If you read the scripture, there was a soul that went on the soul and he sold, but then there was somebody that went and sold what? Tears. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Read the whole scripture and it, it'll show you that there's a, a sower who sold tares, but who let him in the field in the first place? Amen. How did he get in the garden? How did he get in the field to go out there and sow weeds amongst the wheat? God allowed it. Mm -hmm. So, yep. and, and, and this is just sort of a precursor as we go down. And Paul is kind of like, look, I ain't here to drag people out of church. God let you in the church to show who his church really was. It's like anything else. If, if you ain't got nothing to compare it to, how are you going to know the difference? Mm. But I won't spend too much time there. That's a whole nother topic. But God allows this so the truth is revealed. Hatred is revealed. Shadiness is revealed. Sliminess is revealed. Backbite is revealed. Smile in your face all the time. You're trying to take your place. I'm sorry, y'all. I guess. <laughs> don't say nothing, Vic. I, I don't know. I don't know any more words. I'm saying, but uh, <laughs> but but the scripture describes the bad conduct of the Corinthian believers at their common meal. He said, when you come together in one place, it, it, it's just it's just confusion. Mm -hmm. And in, in this, Paul refers to this early church custom. It was an early church custom, I'll say it again, early mm. church custom of combining love feasts, or those feasts that they had, mm -hmm. and the Lord's Supper. Okay? We're we, we getting double under. You, 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 you're going to hear it. You're going to hear it. They were combining okay. the love feasts. The love feasts, <laughs> where they, they bring dishes, and, mm. you know, like. Uh, potlucks or whatever you talk that they would come together and eat just like he did with the disciples mm -hmm. but they were co combining that with the lord's supper okay now with, with that being said um mm -hmm. here's a question um when man usually takes something that's been ordained by god we can usually add we can sometimes add some ingredients to it that ain't got nothing to do with the lord was that happening? Well, well, let's just see. Why did Paul say that this was that something was wrong with this practice? Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I ain't going to let you guess. I'm going to tell you to read verses <laughs> 21, 22. Somebody read verses 21, 22. Anybody. Why did Paul say there was something wrong with the way they were coming together? It wasn't the fact that these things were together. Mm -hmm. The fact was is how they went about doing these things together. Right. Okay. It wasn't the fact that they were together. Why did Paul say something was wrong with this when y'all come together with one feast and then have the Lord's Supper? No, it started at 20 and said in the NLT, he said, it's not the Lord's Supper you are concerned about when you come together. But I'm told <laughs> that some of you to eat your own meal without sharing with others. As a result, some go hungry while others get drunk. What? Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't me. Yeah. Hold, it up, sure wasn't. hold up, hold up. So Paul said. Get past <laughs> say what now? Now I can't get past the fact how they mishandled the Lord's Supper. I can't get past that. Well, the thing was, is they were they eating. About that. It was it, it was the things they were doing in conjunction with the Lord's stuff. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the yeah, motives from their heart, along with their behaviors, mm -hmm. you know. So th th let's look at the behavior they're talking about. Okay. They the, those those believers acted selfishly at their common meals. That's when they normally sat down and eat. Okay. When they normally sat down and ate together, they acted selfishly. They had their selfish conduct at the common meal disgraced the observance of the Lord's Supper. Wow. So when you put that disgrace, this uh, conduct 
in adjacent to the Lord's Supper, mm -hmm. okay, because what they did was the people who had a lot, brought a lot, mm -hmm. the people didn't have much, didn't bring much, mm -hmm. but the people who brought a lot wouldn't share what they brought with the people who didn't have much. Oh, exactly. Wow. Yep. Are you walking with me? Yeah. 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 Yes. 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 So, so I don't, want, I don't want to ask a silly question, but how did those, because we were talking about David probably about a month ago, and when David was in the temple asking for the showbread, and the priest knew that it was sacred, how did the mindset of bring something that is not sacred to the table of something that's sacred? Like, we all know communion is sacred, but how, how does that happen? Do they bring it in their heart? Is there in there already in their spirit? So, like, so, so, so let me say something, Pastor Stan. I know you can take this. It's not a criticism, but you open up a good question. Yes, sir. We have traditionally, traditionally thought that this stuff is happening in the church. This ain't in the church. <laughs> I'm, I'm just being serious. And this is not. This is when they are having common meals together, mm -hmm. and then they have the Lord's Supper. See, mm -hmm. in our world, we have the Lord's Supper at church primarily. Right. Absolutely. When, when God has already told us do this as often, you know what I mean. We just do it as often as they do it at church. Right. You know what I mean. We ain't doing it at home. We do it as often as they do it at church. That ain't what God said do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they were not at home, they were coming together. They would come together not only at church, they would come together in other places. Uh -huh. Now remember, the priests in the synagogue, in the mm -hmm. temple, mm -hmm. set up the showbread and all that. This right. is in the church. We have evolved through the dispensation from the Old Testament to the New Testament to mm -hmm. now we, these churches or places where they came together to worship didn't have no table with showbread on it. Ah, okay. You walk with women? Yeah, absolutely. We 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 meeting over uh, Elder Mo House. Gotcha. Okay. Say, we say we, no we meeting over Elder Rush House. No, I'm just, <laughs> no yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying. You know, so they would have a common meal together, and people would bring food, and mm. then they would observe the Lord's Supper. And like you said, the part that ain't nobody said nothing about. Then they would get drunk. Why? Because they were drinking wine. <laughs> <laughs> holy, holy, holy. <laughs> and then nowhere in the scripture, Jesus said, stop the drinking that wine. Stop right. it. Don't you drink another drop. Don't you drink another drop of that wine. <laughs> I'm in the scripture. Right. I'm in the scripture. I'm in the scripture. <laughs> and, and the trip uh, part was, it was all ripple. They ain't have no no uh, Chardonnay and no Merlot and no uh, whatever nope. all the other stuff they had. <laughs> just well, aged and expensive. It was it, it was all from the bucket in the corner of the house. Wow, that's the tough stuff right there. That's I'm amazing. Just saying, that, that, they, that's where it came they from. really put their foot in it. <laughs> <laughs> Literally put their foot in. It. Yes, but I, I say all that because they would get drunk mm -hmm. and get full. And and, be, and 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 how should I say selfishly making leaving other people hungry mm. while they had overdone overeaten what they would had and still wouldn't share. Wow. Leaving the poor, the poor, and the poor hungry and humiliated. Yeah, exactly. that, that's what I was going to share because although you had two different sets of people there, uh, right. you had the rich, yeah, and you had the mm -hmm. poor. and you had the poor. Right. And they were treating the poor like the poor. <laughs> right. That's wow. why some people, the rich like the rich. some people were drunk and full, and some people were left hung. Yeah. You see, these are Corinthians. And thirsty. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They, they want to get they want to get their drink on too. Yeah. That's so, that's 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 crazy. I mean it. It's hard to wrap your but mind around when you're all, I mean, it's, it's a difference if you're in a different country. Like if you're in, you got a set of people in Taiwan that might be starving, but then in the United States, you know, we got more than enough. But to be in one, one place and that's going on. 
It just seems weird. Like, well, it, know, it's, but that it, happens it, today, Stanley, yeah, in different yeah. places. But you got the rich and the poor. No, no. Yeah. You you got it in certain places in this world. Mm-hmm. You yeah. still have it. I mean, it happens out there in the street where people on the corner begging for money, mm-hmm. begging yeah. for food. I think see, what, see, I, see they were already uh, one step away from being a pagan. So they, these this Corinthian church, where people had been in the pagan world, mm-hmm. when, when they party, we party hearty. <laughs> when we boogie, we boogie. I'm, I'm just saying. I mean, so, that's that's just where they got down. So, with that being said, was there no accountability? Is that what it all boiled down to? Like, and then Paul comes with basically <laughs> the the standard of how stuff should be then received by the Lord. God sent the word of God to correct the behaviors mm-hmm. and to give them instructions on the right way to observe the Lord's suffering. Yes. But Lord he also a- allowed Paul to uh-huh. speak to their behaviors okay. concerning the Lord's suffering. We're just now going over what some of those behaviors were, mm. which later on in the text, we'll understand why the other gospels did not mention any of these uh, uh 27 to 31 mm-hmm. because they were these 27 to 31 were directed to the type of people okay. who do not observe the Lord's Supper the right way. Not that you can't eat other meals, mm-hmm. but it's the way that you do it. In other words, if, if you are jipping other people, letting other people go without mm-hmm. while you get fed fully, not sharing, doing things in excess when others are without. So you can break it all the way down. It's coming all the way to your house. You know what I mean? Because it it, it ain't about the food. Mm -hmm. It's about do you have more than you need and you refuse to let anybody else have any of it. Mm. You know what I mean? So you hold back so somebody's hungry. Wow. Yes, they were. Paul just put him out on Front Street. They were also, to me, they was turning it into a mockery. Yes. You know, people coming there, getting drunk and everything else, and then they want to participate in something that's sacred, and it takes away from the whole meaning yeah. of, of the right. Lord's Supper, you know, when they're there drunk and fighting and acting crazy and everything else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and yeah. the other part of it is he didn't say don't come here and drink. He said don't come here and, and get in excess. And not only are you in excess, there are others that don't have. And when you turn that around, the question is, do we have more than we need and God's house goes without? Yeah. Crickets. Do we, do we have more than we need and we know somebody ain't got nothing? Mm-hmm. Crickets. So you can bring uh, yourself to the communion table and mm-hmm. take communion and be just as guilty as Corinth because you know there were people that were needy and you got a refrigerator full and you won't share none of it. Mm. Well, share no. Selfish. So, so with that question that is, is obviously posing for us to look at ourselves, um, this is a, to me, I see a cry for a savior. Like, yeah, yeah. One of the, you know, one of the main reasons we need a savior because somehow or another with even knowing what Paul is saying uh, and the way Paul is laying it out so flat and honest for us to understand it, somehow or another, we still end up tarnishing something that's sacred. When you look at the, the, everything that you just said, Pastor Green, up until now, there were some things that I'll say I, I can't speak for nobody else, that I didn't know that we're supposed to have in line for we come to that communion table. And I think me and you were discussing it Saturday at the meeting, how um, children are to be taught before they go in to actually take it. Well, this this makes me feel like I'm a child in a sense, because I didn't realize that all of this was encompassed in taking communion. 
Right. And, and, and it, it it goes beyond being without sin because none yeah. of us are. Right. Yes, sir. None exactly. of us are. You know what I mean? But what it does is it speaks to the mindset. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Of not discerning. And we're going to get into it because really, uh, it ain't it ain't me breaking this down. I, it was prayer, supplication. Mm -hmm. uh, he led me to the right text, to the right information. And, and I just want to share it so we can all have the comfort of knowing where does all this come from? You know what I mean? Because we maybe we have been taught, maybe we haven't been taught. But these, it started just by this situation with these people that used to be pagans, just like us, they used to party hard, just like us. They got <laughs> saved, you know what I mean? But they got unsaved ways. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I mean, they, they, they selfish. They drunk, yeah. but you ain't had a drink yet. You sitting there with your lips dry. You got the white mouth, <laughs> as we used to say back in the day. <laughs> the white mouth. You can't get a drink because they drinking everything up. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just like my yeah. I'm, I'm just correlating. I'm trying to make it. <laughs> I'm trying to make it real. Like it's, you know, it's a make it make sense. You know what I mean? Uh, and and this was these were the things that were happening. And even in some circles today, they have communion. And they call for all the pastors. Mm -hmm. Then they call for all the deacons. Yes, sir. Then they call for all the officers of the church. Everybody else sitting there like, look, man, what? When they go? <laughs> make that, make that I'm, communion. I'm, just, I'm saying, because I've been to those churches. Yeah, it make that first Sunday come, so long. And they kneel down at the thing, and you got to watch them get theirs. Mm -hmm. You ain't got none yet. Yeah. yeah. First Sunday well, be so long in some of, those, some of those places. First Sunday don't. Communion. You know that communion is coming on first Sunday, but you also know that that's going to be like a three o'clock, three thirty letting out service because all of that has to happen where somebody has to go first and then the, the ordinary congregation go. Well, I mean, I'm just saying that there's some correlation. I mm -hmm. mean, I, I'm not putting down how people do their communion. That's between them and God. I'm just going to go with what the scripture says. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He asked him, he said, Do, don't you have houses to eat and drink in? Hey, you gotta, what? I mean, why you gotta come together and act like you ain't never had nothing before? You trying to eat it all up and drink it up. Can't you do that at home? You know, That's if you want to eat and, or eat drink selfishly, do it at home. Yeah. You know, so, so what Paul did was he went, he expressed his disdain for this behavior. Somebody tell me how Paul expressed his disdain for that behavior. What, what did Paul say? Just what you say, eat your, eat at your own house. <laughs> no, he, he, he says something over and over again that, as a matter of fact, he said it three times. <laughs> he said, I do not praise you. Mm -hmm. I praise you. Know what he said, no, brother, I ain't giving you no, you ain't all that. I don't care nothing about, you, you, you brought all that food here. I don't care nothing about you brought most of the wine. You know, I'm not praising you for what you're doing. He expressed his disdain for their behavior. Mm. And then he went on to give them instructions about how to conduct the Lord's Supper. You know what I mean? So please understand that it wasn't the fact they were drinking. Please understand that it wasn't the fact that they were had committed, you know, some sins or what have you. Mm. It was their behavior that was inordinate with the brevity of the Lord's Supper. That they combined the two. They could have had a meal and had the Lord's Supper if they did it with the right heart. It's like they could have served. They could have. Uh, so the turtle does what they did in the in the in the uh, temple. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't go in the temple and beat people out the temple because of what they were selling. It was what was in their heart. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. The fact that they were jipping people, they were overpricing stuff. They were selling them substandard turtle doves and, and mm -hmm. things for for. It was a racket that they sell because they knew people were coming because they didn't travel with those things. They would purchase them when they got there. Wow. And they, they changed the money because they knew people were coming from different countries or different areas that had different money. But wow. they were doing it for their own profit. But they wasn't it also because they were doing it in God's temple? 
No, it wasn't because they always did it in God's temple. Yeah. It was the reason, it was their motives for doing it in God's temple. The wow. way they did it. Mm -hmm. Michael, Paul said, huh? Yeah. Because Paul said in verse 20, when you meet together, you are not really interested in the Lord's Supper. Yeah, but, but even in the temple, uh, mm -hmm. to, to your point, Joanne, they they regularly did that. And when you go back and okay. you look at it, it was culturally sound for them to do it because otherwise people would not be able to get those elements that they needed for sacrifice, which should come from the temple. Mm -hmm. Okay, because okay. they were what? They were ready to be what? Sacrificed. Sacrifice, right. But if even if you take those things that should be in the temple and you begin to swindle and jip people and, and do inordinate things to, to be to make a profit out of those things, you know what I mean? Then that is what, is what brought the condemnation from Jesus. Because he made you made my house a what? Den of what? Thieves. Thieves. Oh Thieves. man. Okay, okay so it, let's because they were stealing from the people. Yeah. Oh, here's a turtle oh, dove that's worth three uh, three shillings. Uh, give me 10 shillings for this right here. You came all the way from you came all the way from Ethiopia. You ain't got no turtle dove. You want to do your sacrifice. What you gonna do? You're gonna pay for what it costs. That's right. So and you can do the research on that, y'all. But uh that that's 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 what uh that I was taught in seminary, and that's what I found in in the study. That, that he was he was it was the way people were doing it. See, God is always concerned with the, the how we do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He, he he knows the what and the how. But he said, I suffer the reins and intent of what? The heart. The heart. Yeah. So everybody got a grasp on uh, what was going on at the time? The reason yes. why Paul was... Yes. Okay. Any questions regarding that before I move into the instructions? Cool. So Paul goes on to give instructions on how to conduct the Lord's Supper. Okay. He said, uh, he told him this. He's telling the people in Corinth, for I have what received from the Lord, that which mm -hmm. I also delivered to you. In other words, yep. I'm giving you what God said you should do. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. Paul didn't just make it up. He received it from the Lord. And from he was, Lord. yeah, and he was remembering the events. Then he talked about, uh, what was the first thing he talked about? On the night that what? Jesus was betrayed. The night that Jesus was betrayed. Yeah. So in conducting the, the communion, he put the emphasis on remembering Jesus. Mm -hmm. Communion what is he about, went through, he sacrificed. Yeah, he, he, remembering Jesus. And, then, and there's, a, there's a part of this that's going to be interesting because conduct, in conducting the communion service, Paul put the emphasis on Jesus. Mm. Now, mm -hmm. what feast yeah. or meal was the Last Supper combined with. See, when Jesus had the Last Supper, he combined it with a meal that they were already having. What meal was that? Mm. So the they were already... Jesus' Last Supper. Well, I, 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 I heard the answer. No, Jesus and them were sitting down eating and drinking. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna lay it out. Jesus and the two other side were eating and drinking before he went into the Last Supper. So he was combining that meal, and I think I heard uh, Bishop say it. He was combining that Passover. meal with the Passover. Mm -hmm. It was at the beginning of the Passover. He was having the oh. Passover meal. Oh. Oh, the lights on, the lights came on, the lights came on. So Jesus, yes, did. right. So they were they were doing the, the way Jesus did it, but it's how they were doing it. They had the Passover meal. Then Jesus went right into the last supper, the first, the very first time. 
This was not the first piece of bread that was broken for the night. This was not the first wine that they had drank for the night. Okay. This was in the midst of them having the Passover meal. So we remember that the Last Supper was actually a Passover meal with Jesus together with the disciples. According to the biblical command, the Jewish tradition celebrated the remembrance of Israel's deliverance from Israel, um, from e Egypt rather, uh, to the promised land, beginning in the book of Exodus. <laughs> okay. So what correlation to the Passover meal and the Lord's Supper. There's a correlation to the Passover meal and the Lord's Supper. Anybody? Both of them included breaking bread and, and wine. drinking wine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And drinking. So the Passover had its own uh, a tradition of breaking bread and drinking wine. That was already parts of the Passover celebration. What Jesus did, he, he came in with a new covenant. He added on to the end of the old. You get it in a minute. He put the, the new right up against the old. So how did Jesus correlate the Passover with the Lord's Supper? Anybody? It was com his fellowship. Yeah. With his um, when he said sup with me, yeah, because so he said when, it, when it, he had oh, given thanks, yeah, yeah. So here, here it is. Jesus took important parts of of the Passover, reminders of Israel's deliverance from Egypt, <laughs> and added them to the meaning connected with his own death on mm -hmm. the cross. He said, "This is my body, taking the bread." Mm -hmm. Okay. And we'll call to remember Jesus' body broken for you, right? The Passover meal yes. featured what kind of bread? Unleavened. Unleavened bread. Leaven. Okay. Unleavened. It's unleavened, unleavened bread, unleavened. right? So what is unleavened bread characteristic of is being without what? Without sin. Yeast. Without sin. Without, without yeast. Without sin. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? So when yes. he said my body was broken and he broke the bread, it was symbolic of what? The body. A body without the body. sin. Mm -hmm. Right. Being broken, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Because it was made without yeast and it was made and sin was it was called corruption and it was known as leaven. Mm -hmm. All right. So why was the broken state of Jesus' body and the bread a perfect correlation? Think about the bread. Like you said, without sin. Oh. Here's, here's the other part of that. The unleavened bread used a Passover meal had scorch marks. Mm. Wow. Stripes on it. Wow. It would resemble Jesus' body after he was beaten. Wow. Oh, okay. Because of the way they cook oh. the bread. Like you put bread on the grill. Mm -hmm. You put meat on the grill, you're gonna have what? Strike marks, right? Mm -hmm. Strike marks, yeah. The and grill. there were mm -hmm. there were holes in the bread from its baking that mm -hmm. looked like pierce marks in the same way that the body of Jesus was broken for us. That's the brain. <clears throat> So, so with that being said, did did the when when the disciples were in the room taking the Last Supper and the bread and all that took place, did they under did they even recognize all of this that we're dissecting tonight with the bread and the stripes and no no they didn't. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, they got it better by and by right. The revelations of God through the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. you know, would, would reveal uh, those that things that God would have them to know. But it, it's just that the fact of what this bread looked like right. while Jesus said, this is my body. Okay. The fact he said this pierced, this this bread with, with stripes on it, with holes in it, with oh, pierced man. marks on it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They had mm -hmm. no leaven. He broke it. 
He was without sin. The bread had no love and his body bore stripes and was pierced as the bread appeared to be. Then he said, this cup is the what? New covenant. Mm -hmm. Remember what they were celebrating? The Passover, right? Which was the old. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which was deliverance from what? Egypt, right? Mm -hmm. That's the old. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. glory, 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 glory! I, I think I, I'm about I'm about ready to do something myself <laughs> right here. I don't know because it's so good because he turned around and said, "This is the cup of my new covenant." You know what I mean? I'm gonna give you something else to celebrate. Wow! You know what I mean? You're gonna celebrate another Exodus. We talking about Exodus tonight. We go, you're gonna talk about another Exodus. Mm. That's because awesome. my body is broken for it, and I'm going to bleed for it, mm. so you can what? Come out. So, so, so the old covenant, was that the Abrahamic covenant that he's comparing it to, or the Davidic well, all, covenant? All the covenants were all of them. in the old dispensation. Gotcha. Okay. Until you cross, crossed over into the new covenant. Okay. Which is in the new dispensation. Mm-hmm. And we're going to he talk said he came to fulfill, not to destroy. Yeah, yeah. So all those things that, that were, he is. Okay. Gotcha. That's why he said this cup is the new covenant in my blood. So receiving the cup, we're called to remember the blood of Jesus and the new covenant. So we're doing all of these things in remembrance of Jesus, mm -hmm. not because it's, yeah. they, passed, they passed me the cup and said, you know, eat, now drink. You know, we should be remembering Jesus when we partake of the communion because we know from hence the bread comes from mm -hmm. and from hence the cup, which is the new covenant, comes from. And we're going to talk a little bit about new covenant uh, next week. So how was the, the new covenant in Jesus' blood correlated with the Passover meal? The Passover meal featured several cups of wine. Walk with me. I know we're coming down to the last hour. This is the last thing I'm going to share tonight. The Passover meal featured seven, several cups of wine. <laughs> Each cup of wine had a different title. Hmm. The cup Jesus referred to was known as the cup of redemption. You wow. get it? Yes. So when you look at the Passover meal, they had several cups, and the cups were indicative of different parts of their deliverance. And the cup Jesus referred to was known as the cup of redemption. And Jesus added to the idea of redemption from slavery in Egypt, the idea that his blood confirmed a new covenant that changed our relationship with God. Mm. That's the Exodus. Because we were once bound by what? Sin. We were yeah. once afar off. We were mm. once all those things. Now his blood has confirmed a new covenant that changed our relationship. So what, what mere man could, could have done, that should institute a covenant between God and man. What, what mere man? But here Jesus finds a new covenant sealed with blood. Even the old covenant was even sealed with blood. In Exodus 24 and 8, the mm -hmm. old covenant was sealed with blood. How was mm -hmm. it sealed with blood? What did it do with the blood? In Exodus. Anybody? <clears throat> On the doorpost. Hey, mm -hmm. shout out, out, out. Ooh, there it is. Now the blood is. <laughs> so we will, we're going to stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, y'all. Any questions, any comments? So I know, when, it, when it comes to um, when it comes to Jesus being hated, I know the scripture said that he would. Um, did some of that <laughs> hatred come from also of taking something that once was uh, held to be sacred by some believers? And then here he comes saying that he's coming to fulfill all of it. Yeah. I mean, he, does, he, that, that, he, does, does that come he, from that? Yeah, he broke tradition. Yeah, you know, break he, tradition. He, yeah. 
he broke tradition. You ain't supposed to talk, you ain't supposed to talk like this or act like this. Mm-hmm. But number one, look, look at what you're wearing. Right, right, right. You got on a tunic. Why you? What you trying to act, dog? You know what I mean. You ain't got on no epod. You know what I mean. You ain't, you ain't got on no. You know you are not girded like we girded. You ain't got no pomegranates and and bells on the bottom of your garment. You know what I mean. And you talking to, acting like this. Yeah, he broke tradition. Healing people on Sunday. What 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 are you, what are you doing? What, what is it? What what's going on? They were they were known as a cult. They were thought of as we would think of a cult, to put it that way. They were known as the way. They weren't called Christians until Antioch, which was the only reason they were called Christians was because the unbelievers were really mocking them. Isn't this something how we took a word that really mocked us and we made it right? Yeah. Because somebody, somebody said it was. Mmm. That's the Jeopardy music playing. Ding, 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 ding. So, so it, it, this is where we just kind of unpeeling back to on you guys. Really find the word of God. Please share, interject, ask questions. Um, I, I, I would love to hear if anybody has any other uh, scriptures or uh, supporting information. I know we're at 832, so we're winding up. We really got a long way further than I thought we would get um, in this. Any questions? I did do a little study on the Passover. <clears throat> it said they had four cups of wine. It included okay. four cups. When I looked up the number four in the Bible, it says finality. Mm-hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. That's number four represents. So that's another representation of the cup. Yeah. Anybody else? Anything else? And, and did they say it had, they had different representations for each cup? Yeah. Well, it was only four what I saw that they drank four cups of wine. That's what I read. Really during the past yeah. four cups of wine, they, they sung and they told stories and they read. Yeah. Okay. Because because what I what I found was said several, which could mean four, because it means have to mean seven, but it was several. So it, it make the writer may have not been sure and use mm-hmm. the word that right. The, so it's saying four. So I said yeah. four. My question is, Cecilia, I mean, I, I read up on it, too, but it also said with a special glass. For mm-hmm. I forgot. I forgot. Uh, Elijah. So that means five cups. Right. You mean individual cups or cups of wine? The wine. I'm I'm not sure. And, Me either. I'm not sure about that. I just yeah. said they had four. They would drink four cups of wine. Right. Four and, glasses yeah. of wine consumed during the service to represent the fourfold promises of redemption. Right. right. Mm-hmm. With a special glass left for Elijah. Well, that's what I read. So. Okay. You may be fine. Now, one of the things you want to be uh, aware of too, you may have already searched for it this way, that you want to know the Passover meal is still going on. So, yeah, the Passover meal as they had in Jesus's day versus the Passover meal that they have now may be some of the reason for the different numbers of cups or what have you. I'm not really sure. I'd have to I'd have to go search that out. But but that's a good point. And, and those and those are some of the things that you'll find in Jewish culture that still do that. They still observe those things. And I was just not... speaking in traditional Passover stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. And like I said, it, it's traditional may mean their Jewish traditions or the biblical traditions all the way back to Jesus. It's hard to say sometimes, yeah. but you know, um, just another way to look for it. Anything else, guys? Nope. Nope. 
Anybody hear anything that they didn't they hadn't heard before? No. I didn't know about the four cups of wine. I didn't know about that. Okay. Well, we did, well, I never studied it in depth like you uh, brought about what the contention was in the church. I had yeah. read it, but I didn't go deep. Yeah. Me either. Yeah, I didn't go deep either. That's just what I read. Well, I know sometimes when it gets down to 27 through 31, and it starts to talk about the things that um, such as unworthy and not discerning the laws, death and everything. There, there's some specific things that they're, they're, they're talking about, which was some of the behaviors that they had. Mm -hmm. um, and, and one of the key things to remember that it's all about remembrance. If you're not doing it with the remembrance of Jesus and all that he had done for us, you know what I mean? And you're crossing over into that unworthy. Being unworthy as well means that before you even came to the communion table, before you even had communion uh, on your kitchen table mm -hmm. or wherever you have it, yes. I mean, how are you acting yourself? Are you a selfish person? Do you have a selfish heart? Are you, I mean, are you, are you wrong? When you're talking about sins and, you know, Ten Commandments and the, no, what is your behavior like? You know what I mean? Toward other people. Right. I mean, what is your behavior like for other people? You know what I mean? So it's a lot, to, I mean, it's a lot to think about. I think like Pastor Stanley said earlier, to unpack when we start to, that's why he said examine yourselves. And we'll talk about that mm -hmm. a little bit as well. Yes. Yeah. You know, because it's not all about those things that we quote call sins. You know what I mean? It's, it's some of those things we overlook as sinful behavior. You know what I mean? And because of something we don't like, or somebody we don't like, us, or this is mine. I ain't got to share it with nobody unless I want to. I mean, that's those are things that he was talking to the church in Corinth about their behaviors their perceptions, you know what I mean, of how they even treated other people. You know, if you know there's a need and you don't supply that need and you call yourself Christ-like, you, you want to ask yourself, WWJD, what would Jesus do? What would do? Jesus do? Yeah. What would Jesus do? And you might yep. have to examine whether you're taking it worthy or not. So mm -hmm. we'll talk about that a little bit more. I'm not going to go on with thank God for any other questions or anything. Mm -hmm. hey, Amen. I think we have, have a lot to think about. And let's start, do our own study. I mean, we'll, when we meet again next week, we can go back and revisit uh, other areas that we've already talked about. You know what I mean? Because it's all about finding out what God has in store for us concerning the Lord's Supper. Concerning the Lord's Supper. Amen. 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 I thank God for all of you. Thank God for your input. I, I love having Bible study where everybody has input. You know what I mean? People may ask me questions. Is it this? Is it that? You know, and, and I'm not a, I'm not one of those people who say, you're wrong about this and you're wrong about that. Because we're, we're here to, to learn together. We're here to grow together and flow together in the land of milk and honey. I had to throw that Amen. in. Because <laughs> <laughs> the word of this God is, is truly, the word of God is truly the flowing of milk and honey. Amen. 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 All hearts and minds are clear. Take us home, Jeanette. Let the words of my mouth let the, let, the words, let, the words, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart and the meditation, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight be acceptable in thy sight O Lord my strength O Lord, o Lord, o Lord my, my strength and my redeemer
and my Redeemer. Amen. 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 God bless Amen. everyone. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Bless you, Pastor. Bless you, Pastor. Bless you Vicky. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you all. God bless. Amen. God bless. God bless. God bless.